All right, welcome back to the channel, everybody. This time around, we're gonna be painting a 41 Willis front end, or actually we're repairing and painting. Now this is a uh, front end for a top sportsman uh, or pro mod, however you wanna call it. Um, 41 Willis drag car. Now I originally did this thing uh, quite a few years ago. And since then, I've had to make some repairs before on the actual color, which is, uh, we'll talk about that when we get to that point. But since we had some damage uh, where the artwork is for the grill and the center molding, we're, we've got to redo those. So we're going to go ahead and redo these headlights. Now, I wasn't very happy with these originally when I did them. And so obviously years later, I can do these a lot better. So we're going to make them look a lot better. Uh, First things first though, since we've already got our actual shapes for all of our pieces, we're gonna go ahead and mask, mask these off and we're gonna do the artwork first and we're gonna do the color last. So I'm gonna get this stuff masked up and then we'll go into uh, getting these headlights and that grill and everything taken care of. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly border out uh, the areas I'll be working in. So what I'm doing is using my double masker to uh, quickly lay out an area um, to cover up. Now, if you're using plastic sheeting to mask off cars, this thing is fantastic. Uh, gives you a nice sticky surface to, for that plastic to adhere to, easy place to cut it, uh, to expose the stuff that you need to expose. Uh, very, very handy thing. If you, if you haven't tried one, I suggest you do it if you're, a, if you're big on using plastic for a lot of your masking. All right, now I'm just going to lay down a, uh, what we just call a medium silver. Um, it's not too coarse, not too fine. Something right in the middle of the road. Gives you a good look between uh, kind of your face and your side cast of it. We'll put down a couple coats of this just to make sure everything's good and covered. And um, then we're going to add couple coats of VWM 500 which is a uh, it's color blender but we're going to use this as kind of a intermittent clear coat I don't like masking over top of silver you can cause a cause a strange a masking look in your metallics so I'd rather have that clear layer just to be working on top of to ensure that I'm not gonna to goof up that silver just from from masking tape Now I've already gone and uh, masked off what would be the trim rings for the headlights, so they're they're going to stay uh, stay as they are for now. Uh, I've also masked off um, what would be the grill. I'm using the uh, three quarter inch tape here to uh, essentially kind of border out what's going to be that grill surround. Um, you can see some little piece of tape there where I want it to curve. That way I can make sure everything is is the same on both sides now anytime you're doing this stuff all these different masking tapes that are all these different widths those are your tape measures uh, makes it really easy to make sure everything's the same width everywhere um, and just keeps everything looking real nice so what I'm doing is I'm covering up the stuff that's going to be my foreground so we're going to work from foreground to background uh, and then we're going to go back to the foreground, essentially. Um, so what I've done is i put one piece of quarter-inch tape down the middle because I want the middle grill line to be a little bit fatter uh, than the rest of the lines. So we've got the quarter in the center and then eighth-inch going off to each side. And I'm using a piece of three-quarter green tape as my, uh, as my tape measure. So each one will have a three-quarter gap between them.
All right, now that we're done with the grill, we're going to put down some uh, 1683 black. This is just base coat black. Now this is our background or our empty space. So we're going to go ahead and black this out. Now we're going to get to work on the headlights. Um, I've covered up the surrounding, the bezel surround, and now I've got a uh, 1 16th fine line. And I'm roughly putting about a quarter inch gap between each one, but uh, we're going to do a bunch of vertical lines. And when we get through with the vertical lines, we're going to do one across the center as our guide. And then we're going to actually take that three quarter inch tape again. And we're going to use the three quarter as our, uh, as our measuring tape as we go above and below it. Uh, also, as we go above and below it, I'm adding some curvature to it, uh, even though this front end has a good mold, a good round mold where the uh, headlight would be. To help accentuate it a little bit, I'm adding some curvature into my tape to help to create that illusion that there is a, a round headlight in there. Now, once these basic lines are laid out, um, I've got a picture right there of a headlight uh, that I can look at. And if you ever looked at the front of a Sylvania light, you will see where your grid kind of changes a little bit in certain areas. So what I'm doing is I'm adding some lines and taking away a few places to, uh, to create the same look that you see in the front of a regular Sylvania um, headlight. Alright, so here's a straight on look of what I'm talking about. You see where some breaks and some added little pieces in there just to help create that grid look. And then here I've added a dot in the center, a little bit above center, which is going to be our headlight bulb. And then I'm going to shadow around the outer trim area and then create some shadows coming out uh, to help give it some depth. You can see I darkened a little more on the top than I did uh, on the bottom just because obviously there's kind of a, uh, a shadow going to be in that top section and I did this headlight both sides exactly the same way because I'm using pretending the light source is coming from the same direction. Now I'm going to get all the masking all that grid work off of the front to expose it and then we're going to shade around where the trim ring is again to help kind of put that headlight behind that trim ring. I've also gone ahead and done the little W I had done as a break in that front uh, hood molding. And I'm just going to throw some shadows here and there around some edges. Now I'm going to go in there and I'm going to mask off the, uh, the headlight to cover all that work up that's been done so far. That way we can work on the outer bezel. Now on the top of the hood molding here, I'm going to cover this up. I want to create kind of a top ridge. So I'm going to take a piece of eighth inch tape, cover it up, and then I'm going to later on, I'll go down and I'll add a little bit of shadowing to each side of it. Because uh, I want to, I'm covering these things up to keep them as our, as the brightest point. Now I'm also going to be creating a kind of a ridge in the grill surround, uh, but before I do that, you can see these two lines I've made. They do not meet each other, and that's because I'm going to be shading below each one of these lines. Um, later on, you'll see where I take that same eighth inch tape and, and go around there and create that high point of the grill surround. But for now, I want to create the illusion of where uh, where there's some dark shading. Um, taking place. And you also might notice I've added a shadow line going through the grill coming from uh, the low left 
to about almost halfway up in the center and back lower right. Now here we're going to do uh, little recessions for where our screws would be. So we're going to turn these into Phillips screws using a stencil with just a little slit in it. Uh, so we can get a little horizontal line and then a vertical line. And I'm also darkening some areas that would be naturally dark. Um, right above the light, below the light, below the bezel. Alright, now here you can kind of see the darkness um, that I had done around that grill surround and now I'm going to add that eighth inch line to that to bring these together and create that one kind of a high crown uh, portion of the surround. Same thing like I did on the uh, hood. Now up to this point the only thing I've been using is silver and then I'm using black. Black's the only thing that's been in the airbrush gun. The only thing I'm doing is using it to shade. I'm not going to do anything with white um, till the very end. Now here I'm going to, I've pulled off the trim, uh, the trim ring tape so now we're going to darken around the outer edge of it as well as a little bit darker below it. Uh, we're going to add some little half moon shapes to create the illusion that it is a round piece as, just like we did on the outside of the, the bezel there you can see the kind of dark uh, shadowy parts and we're going to dark it up above and now i'm going to expose the light i, I kept my original light um, there was no need to redo it but now i'm going to go through and shadow around it to make sure it it blends itself in. Alright, now it's time to unmask this thing. Alright, now here what I'm going to be doing is using uh, using some VC5700 clear coat mixed as a lockdown clear. So that just means I've added an accelerator to it so it'll dry in a matter of uh, three to four hours. I'll be able to sand it and, uh, and, and repaint over top if I needed to. Um, I'm going to put down three coats. That'll give me just enough to sand everything smooth where I've created all those lines. Uh, so what we'll end up doing is sanding this smooth and then I'll cover all this up and then we'll be ready to put some paint on. All right, so everything's masked up and uh, I'm gonna lay down one good coat of a G5 sealer, which is just a standard gray sealer and then we'll be ready for our base coat. All right, so I got the gray sealer down on everything and we're ready for our base coat. Uh, now this color, we actually use Brandywine candy over top of it. Now, a lot of people always ask, uh, you know, if we're using a silver base or a gold base, you can use any color base you want. Now the result is, you know, there's no telling what the result's gonna be. Now in this case, what we're using is kind of a, uh, a orange pinkish base. Um, this is a combination of four pearls. It is copper pearl, red pearl, silver pearl, and orange pearl. That's the only things in this formula. So it is a just a pile of pearls sprayed out. And then we're gonna go on, we're gonna put uh, three coats of candy on top of it. And 
and we'll be done. We can go ahead and unmask all this stuff so we can do our little white highlights and touch up anything that we may find wrong and then we'll be ready for some clear coat. All right, so if you haven't already, I highly suggest you get yourself one of these uh, SunPro lights from Luma 3. They are just wonderful for seeing where you're painting, um, especially when you get into something with a lot of curves or you get into those wheel wells. And also, when me spraying these candies, you're not going to miss a spot or, or have a light spot that you may have overlooked from just from just a dark shadow somewhere they are they are fantastic for making sure that you can see exactly where you're putting that paint and making sure you you're getting paint where you're going All right, so everything's based out. You can see this is kind of a, looks more copper than it does pink. It's a really interesting, um, it's a really interesting base coat. Now this is four coats on here. One thing you need to keep in mind, since this is nothing but a pile of pearls going on, it's gonna take a little more paint. That took four good coats to get it covered up and get it right. There's no pigment in the color, so you're, you don't really have something kind of saturating it with color. And even if you sprayed, say, a coat of something similar, just a solid color underneath it to, to help it cover better, you're still putting an extra coat on. So um, all that pearl, just four coats on, takes care of all that. Now we're ready for the candy. Now I do have my old spray out card. This is from originally painting the car, so I know um, how it's gonna look. And then I'm also spraying a new one so we can use this as a guide to achieve a match like we need. So what we're using is brandy wine candy. So three coats of brandy wine candy over top of it mixed up uh, double strength the way I typically do it should give us exactly the color we need. If not, that's why we, that's why we spray those spray out so we can check our work as we go.
All right, so now I've got our candy laid down. These are our uh, our old spray out versus our new spray out. I know it's kind of hard for y'all to see, uh, but everything looks exactly the same. Uh, right here, it doesn't appear that way in the camera, but to my eyes, everything looks identical. It's kind of hard to tell with the sheen on there. Um, Now that everything's been unmasked, we're going to go through, I'm going to actually uh, do a little bit of work with some white, uh, mainly on uh, the that top crown piece I was talking about with that, where I'd made that eighth inch line. I'm going to do just a little bit of highlighting in the uh, corners to, uh, to help kind of brighten and accent it up. So we'll get the center of the grill covered up because we don't want any extra stuff anywhere. Some highlights here and there. Get everything unmasked. Now you can better see that, that part I was talking about. I'm do the same thing at the very top there. We're just going to cover up the sides of it and do just a little bit in the center there. And once we finish that, I'm just going to add a couple highlights in some random places and also some what would be some peaks. Um, we're going to put some along those those grill uh, lines and also uh, the grid lines on the front of the headlight and those kind of they, they help to, to blur the background um, and kind of punch out that foreground Alright, so after all that candy, I unmasked everything, did a little white highlights on my artwork there, and then went ahead and cleared it with uh, three coats of DCU 2021. So now we are finished up. All I gotta do is do a little bit of buffing to it. I haven't bothered to do that. Obviously, we're still sitting in the paint booth. But uh, these headlights, I believe, look 10 times better than what I did years ago. Grill's just slightly different, but you can see those white highlights tend to kind of bring it out, especially on the headlights. And of course the doors got painted. Should match the body. According to my spray outs, everything should look just the same. Now, as usual, everything will be in the description as far as the formula, the materials, all that. There is no paint code associated with this, so don't ask me for a paint code. It's completely custom formula. You could transfer this into another paint system. You just have to go to a, uh, a good paint store and tell them what it is. So. so hopefully you learned a little something. If you did, do me a favor, like, subscribe, and tap that bell, and I'll catch you around on the next one.